Medchuck. Okay guys, so before we get on to today's video, oh, that went in my mouth. I've recently launched a phone company by the name of Phones Find. Now honestly, it has some of the best prices that I've seen for some of the phones that are available and legit, like it's a madness. I'm telling you, you don't believe me, you need to check out the story, you need to check out the Instagram page, you don't even need to follow. I'm just saying, check out some of the prices, some of the stories, the in-face transactions so you see where legit the reviews. Let's get on to the video. Peace. يا رب يا رب يا رب يا رب يا رب يا And so yeah, sometimes the video doesn't need to have the maddest editing to be effective. Alright guys, it's Quinn Chaster, first year medical student at Queen Mary University of London. And you can tell my house is looking a little bit, you know, shambolic, you can tell, you know, towels up there, everything. It is what it is though. Alhamdulillah, man asbaha minkum wa'afan fi jasadihi aminan fi sidbihi fakanna ma hizad lahu dunya. But a person who wakes up with help in his body and he's safe in his house and he has the provisions of the dates as if he's being provided the whole of the dunya. I'm grateful basically. Now guys, if you're thinking you made a similar video to this, you know, this one here and this one here. Sure. So guys, I'm not just doing this for views there's certain information that i should have included that i didn't include so inshallah i will include and so yeah potentially this year hasn't worked out for you and you're thinking that you're gonna have to reapply to med next year but you may still have one last chance so inshallah bear with me and you'll see how this is possible and so yeah potentially there's three things that you don't know so inshallah let's get on to that Guys, i don't even know what i'm doing out here to be fair well i told you i'm a joke man so i just do what i want so let's go back to last summer summer 2020 where i started to make videos on the ucat and i decided to take this whole channel seriously i was initially speaking about the ucat like i got into med so i was like some sort of joke man now this isn't to discredit my UK ebook and it's one of the best ebooks out there and I've made a whole ton of references to the UK ebook throughout the entirety of my channel and a part of the reasons that I give to it is that over 900 students in the first year got the UK ebook and now I've got a whole ton of reviews that you can go check up on the Instagram page and on top of that some of the students have now alhamdulillah got into med. Now if you were there at that time you'd realise that on my results day what grades did I get? Now everyone knows that you need A star AA to get into the majority of med schools in the UK but you guys know initially I didn't get that grade I got three A's and a B. Now QM medical school school is quite notorious when it comes to allowing medical students to become medical students without even having the grade. Oh my eye, what's happening to my eyes? My eyes are hurting. Oh. Now half the Islamic brothers that I knew that came from my sixth form didn't even get the grade. Some of them got AAB, some of them got A star, AB, some of them got AAA and they still were allowed in. And again, you're probably saying I'm pulling off a fallacy just because they allow some people in doesn't mean that it's something that I should rely upon. 100%, don't rely upon it. But I'm just saying if you firm QM as your firm, essentially, and then maybe you miss the grades by like one or two, then inshallah ta'ala, they'll still let you in. So I'd say if you're scared that you're not going to get the grades and you might as well, I don't know, scrap your application now don't think of it like that if you do have an offer and you do even come out with AAB then still believe that potentially they may still accept you and that's what I wanted to highlight and guys if you don't want to believe what I'm saying it's not a problem you know if you want consolidation or confirmation it's fine you know Allah says to Ibrahim then you can go check up on A100 what do they know and then search up Queen Mary uh, and then potentially like rejected students or something of that manner and then you should see some statistics whereby I think 2000 18 they let in 12 students of that manner but that's still a lot though do you understand and especially last year because it was the c word year then it was a little bit mad so they let in a lot of students it was like the biggest increase in medical students ever from what i know from what i know now that being said that's only queen mary how about st george's now if your teachers finessed you on results day and you came out with three a's when you deserved three a stars the next session is for you now what's incumbent on you is to do research now how clearance operates in medicine is that it comes on a first come first serve basis now what's important for you to do is that on results day once you get your grades that you use the numbers that you've researched two to three days prior and then you call them asap in the morning but some of you will be thinking even if i get three a's i'm not likely to get in am i yeah and you're 100 percent you're right there's two factors that will play a part in your acceptance to the interview stage that is going to happen two to three days after that of results day your UCAT and that of your actual grades that you got now for a lot of you the UCAT did haunt you and wallah I'm not gonna lie retrospectively speaking probably one of the hardest exams I've ever taken it was just something that was it was different wallah and I'm not even gonna lie my hair looking that bad it looks like I came my Amazon rainforest bro wallah my hair's looking shambolic bastard <laughs> I'm just joking wallah I'm not on that haram stuff
Don't yeah. worry about it. Now, don't confuse what I'm saying as me saying that getting into medicine via clearing is easy. It's absolutely not. You should be aiming to get high 700s if possible or low 700s or high 600s at the very minimum to think about, oh, I'm probably going to get into med. Now, a lot of you are saying, if I'd taken it last year, do I still need to use that score? No, you don't. What you can do before results date is you can retake the UCA. And in order to bang the exam, then inshallah, obviously there's the ebook that you can go check out, master tips on verbal reasoning, as well as that of abstract and quantitative and this is you making basically the whole book now what's going to happen on results day is that some users may want to reject your insurance choice whether that be biomedical science or radiography or i don't know nursing and so i'd encourage you to call up st george's and then call up i don't even know how to say this university's name angela ruskin they also do clearing and you can get in on results day now hands down one of the biggest tips i can give you to remain composed so many people are going to go into the interview room once they get shortlisted and they're going to remember the potentially the year of trauma that they've had being rejected and they're going to put so much anxiety they're going to act so much Oh, they're going to act so timid. You know, my English just goes down the drain when I try to get a little bit emotional. Now, maybe for a lot of you, you've had that medical school interview practice and you've prepared, you've had those mocks. Maybe you've had some real interviews, but it hasn't gone your way. And maybe you just need those final tweaking moments whereby you're improving your answer. Maybe there's certain things that you haven't clocked. If that's the case, then you can come message me on MedShark and inshallah ta'ala, I'll be able to help you. Now, I've did 50 medical interview students uh, at QM. You know, next year I'm gonna be famous, you know, with a year below me. I'm saying it out like it's something good, but I did help them out, alhamdulillah. And remember to show them your personality. Remember, if you were the interviewer, wouldn't you want someone that brave, but some a little bit ambitious, a little bit confident, a little bit humble. You want a combination of factors as well as having a nice answer. And so to sum up this section of the video, don't see this as your only opportunity to get into med, but more so your second chance to get into med. If you change that mindset, if you have that mindset shift, then inshallah ta'ala will be easier. And now we'll get on to studying abroad. Every time I just used to touch on what does it mean to study abroad. And this time inshallah ta'ala, I'll explain it to a good, good level inshallah ta'ala. I'm not even gonna lie, I'm getting too comfortable in these videos and I'm speaking to you lot like, huh, you're my boy. Now there's two companies that I know of, MedConnect as well as Medic Doorway. Now the owner of MedConnect is essentially the guest that comes on Anas and Ali's channel, so that will be linked in the description box down below. And Medical Doorway is essentially the company that I know one person has actually gone down this route. He was in my class and he decided to take dentistry in Bulgaria or Lithuania or something like that, but he used that company and that company does allow you to study medicine abroad. <laughs> Now the structure of the course is almost the same but it's not the same as all so it's like it's that one of them ones. Typically the first two years is that of like anatomy and the basic clinical skills, uh, physiology, histology, that sort of stuff. Then the next three years is that of clinical placements. It's exactly the same in King's, UCL and Imperial. However where things change is that you don't intercalate abroad. One thing you do abroad is that essentially they force you to do six years but one of the years counts as your first year as a junior doctor. And so it's actually if not faster than some of the courses like King's, like UCL and like Imperial. The only difference to that would be that of Remary, which is essentially five years and no intercalation. The other three universities that I mentioned, they force you to intercalate. So by going abroad, potentially you might be finished faster than some of the people in the UK. And so when doing the sixth year, for example, at Bulgaria, it's called the internship year. Essentially what this is, just to clarify again, is the first year as a junior doctor so that when you come back again, inshallah ta'ala, the GMC will recognize you as a doctor. I'm making it out like they have a choice they will inshallah recognize you as a proper doctor and you'll be essentially apply for a second year post as a junior doctor and again you know it's good it's not like you're some international doctor and you get discriminated against us none of that sort of stuff it may seem like a crazy thing to do and that maybe it's just not for you especially potentially and it's not me being sexist in any manner whatsoever but typically and as, again, it's typically, just out of like statistics wise, women don't tend to do this sort of stuff. Not because they're not manly. I don't know where I'm going with this, you know? I know I'm gonna get hate for this, but one thing I'm saying is like on a real level, women naturally are more emotional creatures. And that's not a bad thing, whereby they might get attached to their family and may not want to migrate or move to another country. That being said, you also may be scared what, how is everything gonna work out? Am I going to apply to these universities? I've never heard of them. What if I go to a university that doesn't even speak English? All these concerns will be in your head. And so that's exactly why I encourage some of the companies that I have mentioned, because it's gonna be very, very difficult, especially when it comes to the fees, paperwork, signatures. I would say, I would, would say, do do it with a company. Now, to be frank, some of you also think that you're gonna get in via grad entry, and that's the reason why you haven't applied. Now, some of you also know my brother, Abu Torah. Now, I don't encourage anyone to be going down the grad route, and I know that some people are gonna say, no, it's a way to get in. The statistics show from 11 
or eight to one in terms of undergraduate entry, it goes to 12 to one for graduate entry, which shows that it's even harder. And forget about that, the scores for the UCAT, you're gonna need like high 700s to even compete or middle 750 to compete. And that is a bad boy score if you were to get that in undergraduate medicine. And I'm gonna wrap up this question by saying that as time increases, you're gonna see this route become more popular. People are gonna actually consider it, especially while the entrance to essentially get into these universities is not that hard, which essentially will be the next question. So let's get on to the next question. Now, nearly a universal requirement for even applying to medicine is to have chemistry as well as biology. Now, in Bulgaria, they may require you to get B's and C's or even A's. Encourageable to get A's, obviously, standard. But then you also need to take an entrance exam, and that's what's really, really important for applying to universities, such as the University of Polev or Polygraph or something, I don't even know how to say it. And as per Romania, then they don't require you to take an entrance exam and they take a greater priority, a greater prevalence to that of having like a B or a C, presumably Bs or higher um, to apply to the university. Now, the next question is how much does it actually cost? Now, roughly speaking, the tuition loan for that of one of the universities that is the most common that you'll see on screen right now, inshallah ta'ala, it was $8,000, which was, again, not that much in comparison to how much you're paying in the UK. 9.25 is what you're paying in the UK over there you're paying like 6.7k but again you have to it's almost like you if you're going to live in accommodation which you're going to have to unless you've got family there then it's going to be almost the same in terms of tuition loan to that of living there in Bulgaria as well as tuition loan so it's going to be near 10k gone per housing accommodation it's like two to three hundred dollars a month and if you want to survive on two to three hundred in terms of commodities if you want to eat luxuries that sort of stuff 10k and the only thing that would say understand which you're gonna have to understand as it is is that there is no loan to take out so you're gonna have to self-fund this or maybe if you're in a rich family that's where things are gonna come into play and it seems a little bit of a disadvantage yeah it is but again that's going to another country we don't live in the you're not in the uk anymore basically you know? now maybe a question you have remember no questions are silly just like we were taught in primary school is that you have to go learn bulgarian or whatever language they speak over there and the question is they will teach you everything that you need to know and remember the lectures are going to happen in English not Bulgarian however bearing in mind that you're in their country it's a part of the course to learn Bulgarian because you're treating people that potentially only speak Bulgarian and so imagine Bulgarians know the language they speak wallahi I'm going to look like a waste man for example if a person wants to come here and only speak Spanish you'll be like hey loco you know what I'm saying yeah sneaking it in now some misconceptions that you probably have that if you're in an international student then you're going to get violated some people are going to treat you like a fake doctor that's not necessarily the case and those that do wallahi they're just probably bored and they got nothing to do with their life now another misconception is that apparently the university will take some money off you and they'll make you fail the year uh, well it doesn't work like that bro like remember that your transcripts for your paper or your exams are gonna be on an online portal for the majority of universities because we don't live in like the 1900 and so you'll be able to see what you got wrong before you get violated to that extent now that being said my people well i hope that you benefited from this video and i know this isn't like the usual video whereby i'm laughing or i'm cracking bants but again if you do want interview practice then i am free to do that so inshallah ta'ala I'll be able to book you a time slot and if you do want the interview ebook it's all on my website you can go check that out inshallah and guys if you made it to the end of the video the special emoji for this week is going to be that of a camel inshallah so do drop a camel in the comment section down below and with that being said obviously the Dean Journey links at the bottom and how to learn Arabic and all that sort of stuff you can go check that down below and the videos associated with it and you know that being said um, assalamu alaikum peace mm -hmm.